We all know that CES is a bed of tech innovation. It causes us to collectively strive for something great. Unfortunately for the oddly named Royale FlexPay, it's one of those cool at first gadgets that quickly loses its appeal once you get a hold of it. Foldable displays have been generating quite a buzz of late, so you'd think the flexing ability of the Royale FlexPay would be intriguing, but it fails to be practical. Okay, so the neat thing about the FlexPay is that it features a foldable display. Seeing it bend in action is kind of cool at first, but when you consider its overall design, it hardly seems remotely close to being a final product. There's still a good way to go before it's a polished thing. So while it's useful that the 7.8 inch 1920 x 1440 AMOLED display can flex to transform from a tablet to a smartphone, it doesn't seem to stay really flat when it's laid out. And on top of that, there is a considerable curve where it actually flexes. So it's not really the most svelte thing when you compare it to some other modern smartphones. Obviously, the FlexPay is combining the smartphone and tablet form factors together. Sure, we feel that its implementation is a bit more favorable than something like the ZT Axon M from last year, but the glitchy software shows us that there's still some considerable work that's needed before it's a polished experience. Take for example, auto rotation from portrait to landscape. It seems kind of unpredictable here with the FlexPay, which is kind of scary. What's kind of interesting is that Royal mentions that there are a total of three screens here with the FlexPay. You have, of course, the front and back when it's folded over, and then you have that hinge, and that's considered a third display. I'm not sure why, but that's what they said. Now, this area kind of reminds me of a ticker that we've seen in some phones. So basically, if you get like a phone call, incoming phone call, you get a notification in that area, and you could use it for that, but it's not really a third display. Furthermore, the overall experience to me seems like it's more smartphone than anything else. I don't see that some of the apps are optimized to take advantage of the extra real estate, so it's not really a true tablet experience either. But hopefully that changes as time goes on. But who knows? Strangely enough, the FlexPay is already out in China, and you could pick it up for about $1,320. That's not grossly out of proportion given that we're talking about a flexible phone here, but the investment isn't likely going to provide long-term satisfaction because of its quirkiness. Not only are we talking about the software experience, but also the entire design and construction. No doubt you'll absolutely turn some heads if you whip it out in public, but we're fairly certain that it'll be short-lived once you uncover how unpractical it really is to use as a daily driver. And that is it for a quick hands-on look here at the Royal FlexPay here at CES 2019. If you guys want to learn more about it, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John B. signing off.